so I moved. And I didn't want to leave NBC. I loved NBC. But I had to make some kind of a deal where I could make some money because here I was getting a terrific salary and was all salary. And I couldn't make a deal for a company. Well, I wouldn't care if I got a million dollars a week. That wouldn't do me any good. What good would that be? With income the tax, tax right. Really sure. Right. So the ones that made me the deal and came right through with it quick was CBS. Then, of course, when NBC realized I was going to go, then they were willing to make the deal. But I didn't want to play one against the other, so I merely took CBS. Well, CBS had uh, generally rated NBC at that time, didn't they, with these uh, production No, the NBC, NBC was, the, yeah, once I got on, but NBC was really the first network. And then when I moved over, a lot of shows moved over. Mm -hmm. So that made really CBS come up on top. Yeah, really I made the million CBS by that move, which I didn't know or didn't think, you know. Network Radio opened the 1948-49 season fresh off its 14th consecutive year of record earnings. But television's market surge had begun. By December of 1948, more than 10,000 homes were turning on TV sets each month. In early 1949, that number would avalanche, and soon, over a million U.S. homes had TVs. It's no coincidence that collectively, the top 50 rated radio shows lost an average of a million listeners. In 1948, CBS had the country's highest-rated program, the Lux Radio Theater. But the network was still lacking the prestige of NBC, thanks to NBC's cavalcade of big stars. At the time, stars operating as employees were taxed 77% of all yearly earnings over $70,000. Paley's accountants figured out that by having the stars incorporate as businesses and sell their shows to the network, they could be taxed at 25% under capital gains laws saving millions. Bailey borrowed $5 million from Prudential Insurance. His first target was Amos and Andy. Charles Carell and Freeman Gosden sold their show to CBS in September for $2 million. And then in late autumn of 1948, the biggest domino fell. Jack Benny was unhappy with his NBC arrangement. His agent, Lou Wasserman, organized his activities into a corporation called Amusement Enterprises Incorporated. Bailey and Wasserman negotiated an agreement for CBS to buy Amusement Enterprises for $2.26 million. When William Paley heard that NBC president Niles Trammell was on his way to California to negotiate, Paley called Benny Direct asking him to meet. Benny was excited. He told Paley to come out to Los Angeles to talk in person, mentioning that if Benny jumped, so would a bunch of other disgruntled NBC stars. Benny's show sponsor, though, American Tobacco, was less convinced. From October through December in 1948, Benny's NBC rating averaged 22.7. Paley brokered a deal personally in which CBS would refund American Tobacco $1,000 for every tenth of a ratings point the Jack Benny program lost on CBS. Floored at his willingness to offer such a proposal, all parties agreed to the deal. Head of NBC, David Sarnoff, never met with Jack Benny during the negotiations. Shortly before Christmas, William Paley offered his affiliated stations glad tidings in the form of a closed-circuit press conference, announcing Benny switched to CBS. In this special closed-circuit broadcast to the managers and staffs of all CBS stations, Mr. Paley has asked that he might be the first to speak to you. Gentlemen, Mr. Paley... I have asked to speak first so that I might have the pleasure of introducing Jack Benny. In a few moments, we'll pick up Jack Benny and Amos and Andy, too, speaking in Hollywood. But before we do that, I want to take the opportunity to say something else. It is in many ways, I think, the most significant thing I could say here, and that CBS, in fact, can say to the world. It is not about the developments of the past few weeks which have happily resulted in bringing Benny to CBS so soon after Amos and Andy. 
We all can see what this means to our Sunday night schedule and to our competitive strength and prestige as a network. But I'm thinking of something more important. It's the network Jack Benny is coming to. The network we are today. CBS is now the leader. Today, not tomorrow. That is what I take deepest pride in as I talk to you. In the fact that CBS today, all of you, already have the largest audiences in all radio, day and night. The largest individual audiences, the largest average audiences. This is an achievement of which you can be particularly proud. It couldn't have happened without your management and your facilities, without your own great status in the community. And we all recognize, I think, that it couldn't have happened as it has in just this past year without the accomplishments of the CBS package program operation. We did not depend on the hope of bringing some established great programs of radio to CBS. We developed our own, our Godfrey, our My Friend Irma, our Suspense, our Miss Brooks with Eve Arden, our My Favorite Husband with Lucille Ball, and all the others. Benny's rating in January of 1949 was 28.3, up 5.6 points. 